I'd like to call in order the Madison Local Board of Education for its regular meeting, September 17, 2013, in the new Madison Middle School. This time, would everyone stand for the pledge of allegiance? Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Agenda. 
The artist was the fourth grade Homer Nash Kimball student, Jenna Cottis. Mrs. McKibben certainly has a talented group of young students. Uh, Jenna? is a colorful animal alphabet colored pencil drawing by Erica Scheinman. Erica was a 12th grade student at Madison High School when her work was featured on the cover of the May 13th Board Agenda. Erica is a June 2013 graduate of Madison High School. I believe Erica is with us tonight. Erica? <laughs> I'm sorry. Next, a very still light colored pencil drawing by Darlene Work was on the May 21st cover. Darlene created this beautiful, tranquil scene in her art class with Miss Arath, I can't remember her last name, at Madison High School. My daughter after is a teacher. So um, that is Darlene. Is Darlene here? Nope. Next up, Madison High School has selected talented artist Michaela Bevan is one of them. Uh, her Cleveland class colored pencil drawing was drawn on the ninth grade art class of Miss Kathy Rabbits on May 28th agenda and featured a very still drawing of the class. I don't believe she's with us tonight. Okay. Next up, this name I think I can pronounce, it sounds from there. Samantha Trauma, also a ninth grade Madison High School student, used a pen and ink to draw Train Depot under the direction of her art teacher, Ms. Kathy Rabbits. Um, hopefully, Samantha will continue using her art talents. Her Train Depot was a featured art on the board agenda's May 29th cover. Samantha Trauma. Next, in, uh, in anticipation of a bright summer sun, Sunflower, a colored pencil drawing by Karen Estrada, brightened the cover of the May 31st agenda. Karen is an 11th grade student at Madison High School. Her art teacher is Kathy Arabitz. And I don't believe she's one of those times right here. Um, next up, Caitlin Roll is an up and coming artist for the Madison High School. What Art Is To Me was drawn by the sixth grade student under the direction of art teacher, Ms. Denise Carr. Her artwork was featured on the June 18th agenda cover. Uh, Caitlin Roll, I don't know, I believe she's not here tonight. Okay, next up, Magic Markers was used by Kellen Schwartz to draw his dinosaur while attending Madison Pre-K. Kellen's drawing was used on the June 27th board agenda cover. He can definitely tell them that he likes dinosaurs. <laughs> Kellen is a kindergarten at South Elementary and shows some outstanding artistic talent. Kellen. brought out the dreams of a tropical beach from Caitlin Barnico. Caitlin used crayons to bring her dream to life while attending summer last week. Her beach scene was on the August 2nd agenda cover. She's a fifth grade student at North Elementary. I don't believe Caitlin is here. Okay. Next up, Summertime Favorites is a crayon drawing by Riley Turnbull. She must have been thinking about the fun things she drew this summer in the summer last key. Her fun drawing was featured on the cover of the August 6th board agenda. 
Riley is attending South Elementary as a third grade student this year. I don't think she's with us this year. Now we have Andrew Moldar. See, to sum up every, all his thoughts with, oh no, summer is over. Summer <laughs> last week coming to an end must have inspired this drawing. The August 20th agenda cover featured Andrew's artwork. Andrew is currently a third grade student attending South Elementary. <laughs> I got to help myself a little bit here, but another pre-K artist is Charlie Fellows. She used finger paints to create a fun, colorful fish that was used on the July 23rd agenda cover. Tropical fish must be uh, her favorite of Charlie's. A Quiet Beach Crayon Drawing by Abby Schmidt graced the cover of the September 3rd Board Agenda. Hopefully, Abby will continue her artist endeavors at the South Elementary as a fourth grade student this year. Abby Schmidt. agenda cover. She must have seen the many castles to create such a detailed drawing. Brooke is a first grade at, at North Elementary. Her art teacher is Ms. Michelle Guerrero. Uh, Brooke. go through here and then we're going to go on to wrestling. We had a, a bunch of artists because we had all these summer meetings and we wanted to do it when it was a televised meeting when the kids could get appropriate recognition. As you can see, we have, <laughs> as you can see, we really have some talented kids. And I think that's a great tradition in the school district where we do our, our the covers of our uh, board agendas for kids' artwork. Um, our art department is very strong, as are a lot of our other departments. And, but at this time, we're going to kind of switch over to the athletic end. And this is something that happened last, end of the last winter season. And for some reason, one reason or another, we never, we never got it in here. And I didn't want to overlook it because it's, it's just an unbelievable accomplishment by both of these young men. Um, I personally went down to the state wrestling tournament in Columbus. I personally saw both of these guys wrestle. And, and i got to tell you, the, the tradition continues in Madison as far as the quality of wrestlers who continue to turn out. I, I want to commend all of our wrestling coaches, especially those at the high school. Um, Ryan was at <laughs> Wurzburger and uh, Coach, um, the coach is? Oh, 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 Tim Willis. Uh, I don't think they're here tonight, but they, they certainly deserve recognition uh, getting these guys prepared. The, the first one I'm going to talk about is, is uh, Nick Montgomery. And he's not with us tonight, he's actually in college. Nick wrestled in the 138 pound weight class, took second place in the state of Ohio. So in other words, Nick was wrestling for a state championship. Uh, we've never had a state cha champion in the school district, and, and I was down there, and they could have gone either way, and I'm telling you, Nick represented us well. Uh, Nick is also a pack champ, a sectional champ, and placed first at the district wrestling meet. Nick was a senior last year at Madison High School. So let's hear it for Nick. Okay. Next up, and we're very fortunate to have him with here with us tonight, and I believe his parents are here too, is uh, Jared Lasco. Jared is a sophomore wrestler in the 126 pound weight class. He took fourth place in the state wrestling meet. Not only did Jared make it to the state competition, he is also a sectional champ in his weight class and in third place in the districts. Since he is only a sophomore last year, this year he'll be a junior, um, we're recognizing his accomplishments last year, but I, I think we've got a future state champion in the making here, and Jared Lasker, who's also a very, very good football player. Uh, I believe he plays cornerback. I don't know what he plays on offense, but I know he's an excellent cornerback. 
Oh, okay. And, and, and Coach Tim Willis, the, the assistant coach and uh, varsity football coach, is here with us. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Let me say this. In, in the state of Ohio, two things probably around the country, if not the world, were known for are football and wrestling. If you can go anywhere in football or wrestling, it's an unbelievable accomplishment in this state. And, and our football team, by the way, I've got to mention Pete Perry, uh, 34 to 6. So a little brown jug is here for another year. But Jerry Orlando, to finish fourth in the state, Nick Montgomery to finish second in the state, there's a lot of good wrestlers in the state of Ohio. And, and you got to be, first of all, you got to work extremely hard. Second of all, you've got to be extremely talented. And third of all, you've got to be a little bit lucky. And, and I, I hope Jared makes it to become a state champion this year or next year. But if he doesn't, i, I got to tell you, it's not through lack of effort. It's not through lack of having a big heart. It's not through putting the time in that he needs to put in. He's been wrestling since a young man in this school district. And I know Ryan has worked with him for a number of years. I know Coach Willis has worked with him. And several, several other community members if you go to the wrestling room on a night of practice during the season, you'll see all kinds of veterans come back and work with these kids. Um, it's a commitment by the wrestler. It's a commitment by the family. It's a commitment by the coaches. It's a commitment by a lot of people to make that happen. So I, I, I really, from the bottom of my heart, want to thank the wrestling program for all that you're doing for these young men for our school district. Thank you. Thank you, Coach. STEM project through the Lake County Educational Services Center. The girls developed an idea called Madison Family Game. Madison Family Night is designated uh, to get entire families participating in activities like tag, cornhole, etc. to get them to start living healthier and active lifestyles. These two young ladies finished third in the competition and received a $500 prize. Congratulations to Brianna Campbell and Allison Stanley. Come on down. But anyway, I, I digress with all these awards again, and, and again, I want to say, if you haven't been to a Friday Night Football game this year, we've got a great team. They're doing a great job with these kids. Get out there. We play university this week. Uh, at university at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and I believe the following week we're at home against we Shark. Come on out, support your team. You got a, a good group of young men, a great group of coaches that are working with these young men. We're very fortunate to have the type of programs we have extracurricular for these kids in Madison. Thank you, coach. Thank you for all your that all your staff does. Not the awesome band we have. Oh yes, and we you know why we real we recognize band members a lot of times in here as you well know from you know the, the, the different competitions they go to. Rarely do we get a chance to say something about the some of the sports programs because we try to, for the most part, we, we stay away from that because they have other venues of, of, of being recognized. That's why I, I just took the opportunity tonight to accentuate that tonight because the band's in here all the time for different awards that they, they get for these competitions. But I do recognize the fact, and I'm a big supporter, and I watch every halftime show. Mr. Mr. Vaccarello makes me do that. <laughs> All right, before we uh, dismiss everyone, I want to move up board member reports right before public participation while Coach Willis is here. And not that the Perry Madison game isn't different than the athletic event that we have, but in a way it is different because it represents a lot of us. I think about the John Cougar Malikoff song, uh, I was born in a small town. I really think it depicts Madison on Friday night. Uh, that's what we're all about. And I think, uh, Anyone could rob the community that night because I think everyone was at Perry. So uh, that's a good thing and a bad thing, but it was great to see such a great crowd. And there is a lot of pressure involved in that game. You can ask Coach about that. 
when he welcomes it. He told me once, I'd rather see the stand still than uh, see no one there at all. So I, I think that's um, very commending to our coaching staff, to our community, and especially to our players and our students. And uh, Coach Wills, I don't know if you want to come up here. And, all right. But we want to thank you, for, for, as not only as myself, but as the board, for a job well done and continued success. We're going to come back for reports, board member reports, but anyone who wants to leave with the little ones, you're not um, you're more welcome to stay, but you can leave at this time. Before you leave, I have a quick public service announcement for everyone. The Volley for the Cure is October 2nd. If anyone is interested in helping to volunteer, please um, feel free to contact us on Facebook or to catch me after me. But if you want to leave at this time, you may. Recognize the voice of the Blue Streets. So everyone is leaving. Mr. Trauma, the voice of the Blue Streets. How are you, sir? Okay. <laughs> All right. We'll come back to board member reports. At this time, we'll have public participation on any agenda item. The agenda was back corner of the room. If you want to come up and speak to the board about any on the agenda this time? All right, we'll come back to public participation at the end of the meeting. Now, moving along, board member reports. Does anyone else have anything by the board? We've got a very active fall so far. Right. Now, what do you think is the highlight of the meeting? But we beg to differ sometimes. Reports and recommendations by our treasurer. Mr. Michael Beckerell. Oh. All right, we need a motion to attend the Evan Delegates of the 2013 OSBA Annual Business Meeting at 7.30 in the morning, Monday, in the big room at Columbus. I only know that because I've been there the last three years. We need a motion. I'm getting this by the process of elimination. I should tell you that right now.
even though it's half a million dollars of bonds in only five years, $38,000 is going to savings. So just wanted to report that back to the board. Um, most of the other items on the board agenda under the treasurer section, we discussed a couple weeks ago at the planning meeting. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go through with the, the, the motions. Um, the first is to engage in the following actions as listed below. To approve the financial reports for all funds, fund to fund transfer report and the check payment register for August 2013. Thank you. Comments? Mr. Vaccarella? Yes. Jay Fabian? Yes. Michelle Hayes? Yes. Rex Ryder? Yes. Kelly Tromba? Yes. The vote is 5 0. The second is to approve the transfer of $12,999.84 from the general fund to the employee self insurance fund. I'll move. Second. Comments? What's, what's the purpose of approval? Uh, we have a flexible spending account that the employees can put money away pre tax for unreimbursed medical and dependent care. And in order to properly account for that, we have to set up a separate fund. This advances the money into the fund because under the IRS regulations, most of the money can come out on the first day of the plan. And with every paycheck, they repay 126th of that amount. So we advance it into fund 024, and throughout the year, it's repaid back to the general fund. So by the end of the year, there's no effect on the general fund. Anyone else? Mr. Becker, love. Dave Fabian? Yes. Michelle Hayes? Yes. Rex Ryder? Yes. Kelly Drama? Yes. Jacqueline Asdell? Yes. Vote is 5-0. The next item is to approve two change orders. The first one with Dunlap and Johnston in the amount of $55,285.67 for additional work at the South Elementary School. And the other is with Dunlap and Johnston in the amount of $25,637.70 for additional work at the South Elementary School. They are separate change orders. Motion? Second. Move to the Second. Second. Comments? Mr. Agarello. Michelle Hayes? Yes. Rex Ryder? Yes. Kelly Tromba? Yes. Jacqueline Asville? Yes. Jay Fabian? Yes. Vote is 5-0. The next item is to approve petty cash for preschool latch key in the amount of $200. Hello. Second. Comments? Mr. Agarello? Rex Ryder? Yes. Kelly Tromba? Yes. Jacqueline Asbill? Yes. Jay Fabian? Yes. Michelle Hayes? Yes. Vote is 5-0. The next item is to approve the permanent appropriations for fiscal year 2014 as listed below. They're listed by fund um, with the total amount being $37 million. $755,857.28. So moved. We'll second. Comments? Mr. Baccarol. Kelly Trombo? Yes. Jacqueline Asbill? Yes. Jay Fabian? Yes. Michelle Hayes? Yes. Rex Ryder? Yes. Vote is 5 0. The next item is to approve a resolution authorizing the sale and issuance of bond anticipation notes for the purpose of acquiring energy efficient improvements for the school district. So, I'll second. Comments? Mr. Zacharello? Jacqueline Asbill? Yes. Jay Fabian? Yes. Michelle Hayes? Yes. Rex Ryder? Yes. Kelly Tromba? Yes. The next item are to accept a series of donations. Um, the first is a donation of two boxes of notebooks and notebook paper and a sling bag full of pencils for the students at Madison High School given by Asa Cox Homes. The next is a donation of a clarinet from Donna Frederick to Madison High School, the Madison High School band. Um, the donation, the next three are donations for the bell display at the Veterans Memorial Stadium. Um, the first is $150 from e Limited. The next is $50 from Paquette Auto Sales. And the third is $100 from Fred's Appliance. Thank you. Comments? Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Becquerel? Dave Fabian? Yes. Michelle Hayes? Yes. Rex Ryder? Yes. Kelly Trombo? Yes. Jacqueline Asbill? Yes. The vote is 5 0. And that's all I have. Before we go on, I, I thanked you when you originally brought it up about the library, but I want to thank you again for following through with that, uh, for saving us that money. I realize it doesn't save the school board or the library. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank
Thank you, Mr. Vaccarella. And moving on to item nine, reports for our administration team, Dr. Roger Gowdy and Mrs. Angela Smith. Okay, um, my reports are probably short, Mr. Ryder, because Mrs. Smith is going to give a full blown presentation tonight on the uh, state report card. Uh, so I'm going to allow her to have that time. Uh, but I just want to kind of give you an update. I don't know how it's an update this for the board, but for the community on um, the ledge fund situation. There's a lot playing out in the media, but again, it's, it kind of is what it is. We've got 80 plus students coming here. And at this point in time, um, Ledge One is still on the ballot this November for a renewal of their, um, uh, not millage, but their income tax combined with new millage, uh, 12 mil plus. Uh, that's up to their voters. That's not an issue for us. But, um, you know, we, we at this point in time are, are running a bus to pick up kids at the circle, in the Ledge One circle. Uh, and at the Mount Hope Community Center um, to, to assist those families in getting the kids here that had already registered with us. Um, the Mountville trustees voted unanimously to allow us to do that. The uh, Thompson trustees voted unanimously to allow us to do that. The church, the Methodist church, both their board of trustees voted unanimously to allow us to do that. There's all kinds of law that's going around by a couple of individuals, but the people in the Lejmont community are supportive of what we're doing to try to provide safe transportation for those kids to our schools. So that hasn't changed much. That's pretty much where that's at. Do you have any questions? I don't, but I think it's important for people to know that um, it is safer for those children to be driving the bus, safer for our kids that are getting off the bus at school, safer for our kids Um, and have 
expand that to be something more than just putting tape on ankles, but to actually teach kids and help kids that may be interested in going into that type of thing. Both, I think, are, are interested in, in wellness and fitness of not only the students, but the staff and the community. Uh, both are interested in nutrition, because that's kind of a flavor of the month type thing that goes around now. Everybody's on the nutrition bag, bandwagon. Obviously, I'm not. I get a few pounds lighter. But the, uh, uh, the, uh, the nutrition is another big thing. We're willing to work with our food services personnel. Uh, I think I covered the major things. Uh, and each one of the offers is a little bit different. So, again, we want to do what's best, ultimately, we want to bring to the board what's best for this school district, this community. Because, uh, again, I think the wave of the future in public education is developing partnerships. And if we, I think if we do this right, it's, it's a template for us to do other things with other corporations. So if we deal with either one of these, I think it would be good. So like I said, I'm meeting with one of them tomorrow, I believe three o'clock tomorrow. And I'm waiting for a response from the other. Okay. Now this is Smith now, is that good? Yep, we are. Spot our state report. And I'm going to ask that you take a seat out in the audience. We're going to use the projection projector and the projection screen. All right, thank you, Mr. Diesel. The spotlight works. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't do it, Jay's made me do it. <laughs> we played with the focus in this afternoon, so this is our first time through. Um, my presentation is on the 2012-2013 state report card, and there has been a lot of changes to the report card and so I'm going to try and put it in a 30,000 foot view for everybody tonight and not bog you in too many numbers and too much data. Because after a long day, I think that's the last thing anybody wants to hear is every last number. And tech person, can you take that off? I already took it that. Or is it just, is that warming up? All right. Like I said, we're learning the system. <laughs> it's kind of a test. Um, key changes to the state report card this year. As many of you know, we went from the, uh, to the assignment of letter grades from multiple areas versus an overall rating. So that is a huge change since they've been doing state report cards. I think back when I started teaching 27 years ago, I remember in the Akron Public Schools, they got an A for something. Um, so they, that was the last time I remember use of any type of rating. So now we're down back to an A to F rating system. The state felt that many people know what grades are and that they could relate better than the categories that we used to have. For this year, we are evaluated in four areas with nine separate grades for the 2012-13 school year. And then there will be additional changes that will be coming in August 2014 and full implementation of the report card in 2015. I am sorry about this. Like I said, we're learning this as we go. Achievement, we're rated uh, in two areas on the report card for this, and there were individual grades for this. So what I've tried to do in each area is give you an overview of what those areas are and then talk about how it affects Madison. So the performance index is a measure we used to have on the old report card and that takes all the students tested. The higher the score on the test, the more points you get. And then they turn this this year into a letter grade system and I'll explain a little bit more how that works. Indicators met, these are the old testing indicators and those have not changed except they were again assigned a letter grade for achievement. There were 24 indicators for the 2012-2013 school year. And those are all the different tests that we take. Our performance index grade was a 98.1 of a possible score of 120. 
which is then converted to a percentage scale, which equals 81.7. And what they do with the performance index is they take all the grades on all the tests and it, they're assigned a weight. And then they take a percentage of that. And then they come up with that 98.1% number. And that's the highest you've been performance index-wise in several years. And if you drill into the state report card, and I'm going to give you a website for that later, you can actually see our growth in that area. Indicators met. We got a grade of an A. Uh, our district got 22 out of 24 indicators. That was 91.7%. We did a 7th grade math and 8th grade science. For 2012-2013, the benchmark was 75% of students proficient or above for each indicator. For next, this coming school year, we have to be at 80% or above on each indicator. And that's very important because as we look to the data, then it will tell us what we need to work on this year based on some of the things we saw last year. Um, graduation rate. We have a four-year graduation rate and a five-year graduation rate. Uh, the state has done numerous things with graduation rates since I've been in central office. And the first year that I was up there, it was like a 20-page report to how to figure out how to count somebody for graduation. They have gone to counting those students who earn a diploma within four years of entering ninth grade for the first time. And that means really tracking where students go. So any incoming freshman for this past year on our report card, and it goes back to 2012 graduates, not 2013. Um, we had to know exactly who entered and who left and track each one of those students. Because that's really important, because if they go somewhere and go to like ECOT or another school, then they count on that school's graduation rate. So it's really important to know where students go. And then the five-year graduation rate is, again, counting those students who entered in ninth grade. And it takes five years, and then you get um, some points for that. They give you a scale, and it's different than almost every other scale on the state report card. Most scales on the state report card are 90 to 100 percent to achieve an A. Well, if you look at the four-year scale here, it's 93 to 100 A, 89 to 92.9 B, 84 to 88.9 C, uh, 79 to 83.9 D, and below. 79, below 79% is an F. For the five-year scale, it just inches up a little bit, tightens up that window even more. So it's not your typical 90 to 100 scale. So for Madison, our graduation rate for a year for the class of 2012 was 86.1%, which was a C. Five-year was 88.2%, which is a C. And of all the things we do, we want our students to earn a high school diploma, and we work very hard on that. Um, we have, through our Title I funds, we have somebody working with our staff and our students and our parents to ensure that those students that are at risk when they enter ninth grade will make it all the way through in four years. So we are, we are aware of what we need to work on, and we're working very hard to improve that. All right, all the measures on the new report card. This is probably the most challenging, and I tried to keep it really at a high level because when I was studying it this summer, it took me about three hours to figure out exactly what the measure meant. So uh, gap closing is based solely on achievement. So whatever students score on the test in a particular subgroup, that's what that measure, the annual measure objectives are. So it's measuring academic performance of specific groups of students, such as racial and demographic groups. So for example, it, it replaces what used to be, and this is all for Title I funding, it's for the federal funds that we get, the adequate early progress measure on previous report cards. The more subgroups you have, the better your average could potentially be because you're averaging more groups. In Madison, there we have six subgroups out of the ten. Uh, we have all students, so every student that gets tested counts. Economically disadvantaged, Hispanic, multiracial, and students with disabilities. Okay? And so as we go through these subgroups, it becomes a, a more measures. And I think I did leave one out when I was doing this. 
I'll have to go back and think about what that one is. Um, so the school, school cannot get an A on this measure if one of the groups is not reaching the goal set for all students. So when we're averaging them, if you didn't meet it in one area, you don't get an A on the measure. They automatically knock you out of that. The letter grade is the average of the points assigned to each subgroup for meeting the uh, state goal for annual measure of the objectives. It includes all students tested in reading and math, plus the federal graduation rate, which is lower than the state graduation rate, by the way, to meet that indicator. Okay, so for our three subgroups that we met, oh, reading for, uh, was set at 83.4%, and three, three were below. And the one that I did leave out was white, I'm sorry. Caucasian. Those were, that was another one of the, that was the third subgroup that we have. So, and then for math, it was 78.5%. So reading's a little higher, math's a little lower, and it's really important to know that 2014, I do believe in the old law, was when we had to have 100% meet these indicators. So what the state has done through what's called a waiver is they've set these things back showing that you're going to make progress. They just want to show people making progress. So what the data tells us is the areas that we need to work on or the subgroups that we need to work on are Hispanic, economically disadvantaged, and students with disabilities. All right, so that it's, and we ended up with a C in that measure, which is three met it, three didn't, and when you do all the math with their points and then there's a two-year average, we ended up with a 72.1%, uh, which is a C. Now, it's important to note that if you were to look at the building report cards, some buildings only had two subgroups, maybe three. So when you don't make one, that automatically is going to bring your percentage down, and it's going to be harder to get it. So it's really just, it's another data measure. Here's the one I think that says the most about what we do. It's called progress. And the district's uh, average progress for its students in math and reading is grade four to eight. And that's your value-added measure. How much are students actually learning when they're in the classroom? How much are they growing throughout a year? So what does that look like? Did they grow more or did they grow less? And progress is measured in four areas. Overall reading and math, grades four to eight. Gifted students in reading math that they're identified as superior cognitive, which is the brightest of the bright, IQ-wise. Students in the lowest 20% statewide in reading and math. So they're, they're, the low, they're measured against all students statewide in that lowest 20%, and then students with disabilities. And I think this says it all right here. Madison's progress is an A overall. B for our gifted students. And it's important to note that they're using the state tests. And these students typically perform well on the state tests to begin with. So you're seeing how much they grow, and they're sort of called stretch in the test. So it's hard for your brightest of the bright to even get that score, and we did very well compared to some other districts. We got an A in working with our students in the lower 20%, and our A with students with disabilities. It means that we are making strides and making sure that our kids are making progress. And A means they've made at least two steps worth of progress without getting all into the metrics of the um, statistic. So I want to talk really quickly about what's coming this year then, and then what will be coming in the following year. Because we have lots and lots of changes statewide. This is the first year of the third grade guarantee. So we will be looking at a full implementation of the third grade guarantee. So we'll be looking at K-3 literacy, and that will display some results on the state report card for next year. Next year, we will have the prepared for success indicators, and there's about six of those, and that will talk about the college and career readiness of our students. How well are our students going into college, and how well are they going to be prepared? And again, on the state website, because I didn't want this to be a, you know, our presentation, I didn't want to go into every one of those indicators, and we'll have time to talk about them more throughout the year. Um, I just wanted to say it's coming. And then in 2015, the 
state's going to fully implement this report card. There will be component grades in achievement, gap closing, K-3 literacy, progress, graduation, prepared for success, and then they're going to take all of those and give us an overall grade, much like we're used to with excellent with distinction, excellent, the old system. And then in 2016, which will be new for our high school staff, once we've had two years of the end of course exams implemented, we will have value added for high school. That's that progress measure based on the new tests. And that's the last measure, as of right now, but as we know with the state, things are subject to change, that they're going to face it. And we're to review the report, report card online. This is, if you type out the OEE website, this is the website that it will link you to. You go in, type Madison, click on Madison and Lake County because there's multiple Madisons, and then you get the whole report card. And that is it. Questions from the board, which we can do back up here. I'd like to thank Joe and Matt and Mr. Brady for helping get this all set up this afternoon. screen to actually do the presentation on <laughs> versus what we had to do in the course. Any questions for the board? Can we turn the projector off? Yes. Sir. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank that 
It's going to get us the most bang for our buck. And now that we've got buildings built, we've got great facilities, we've always had great teachers, we're going to have to start looking at what we're doing, and we've got one of the best in the business here working with us to help us make that happen. But at some point in time, we're going to have to have more lengthy discussions than tonight affords us. But we have to start looking at that end of it to stay ahead of the curve and stay out there so that, that, that Madison and back is a world-class school district. Part of it is going to be our curriculum. Part of it is going to be these partnerships. Part of it is going to be just a lot of hard work by the people at the front table here. So just kind of giving you a heads up of what's coming down the pipe as far as education. But thank you, Angela. Let's give it a Yep. All right. Um, I'd like the board 
then obtain the following personnel recommendations. Uh, first, accepting the following resignations. Melissa Wilson, Educational Assistant Player on Aid, effective August 5th, 2013. And Nick Gustin, uh, high school freshman basketball coach, effective August 30th, 2013. And to approve the following unpaid uh, leave request for Renee Elliott, uh, Madison High School Food Service uh, Manager Helper, uh, from August 30th, 2013 through December 20th, 2013. To approve the following transfers, Kathy Tepley, uh, three hour per day food service cashier position, effective September 10th, 2013. Uh, enter into an employment contracts with Kathy Lobus, long-term subcontract, effective September 19th through November 29th, 2013. Uh, Maureen O'Toole, long-term sub uh, to teacher contract, Kathy Kindergarten, uh, August 27th uh, until the position is filled. Uh, Melanie Reinke, a one-year of limited contract, latch fee assistant, uh, and uh, that would be September 3rd, 2013, and Deborah Richardson under a limited contract special education secretary for the 2013-14 school year. And we'd like for you to consider the approval of the following 40 substitute teachers as approved by the Lake County Educational Service Center and or the Mass Local District Assistant Superintendent uh, under one year limited substitute teacher contracts beginning with Jocelyn Albert and ending with Robert Woods. The following 50 persons and casual day-to-day -day substitutes for uh, uh, board rate of compensation for the 2013-14 school year, beginning with Tammy Anders and ending with Allison White. And the following unpaid uh, volunteer coaches, uh, Tracy Martin, Lisa Baller, and Beth Siani. Cocoon, I'm sorry. And the follow, following 41 certificated personnel under one year limited supplemental contract for the 2013-14 contract year, beginning with Tom Hooperts and ending with uh, David Nagum. And the following five non-certificated persons for one year limited personal service contract, beginning with uh, Vicki Navy and ending with Steve Couch. And the approving of lateral moves for Jessica Farrell, um, and uh, from MA to MA plus 15, and Lorraine Summers from BA to BA 15. And finally, amending the following contracts of Melissa, Melissa Arkey uh, to a MA step uh, six, and to a uh, supplemental contract of Tom Kernan, uh, the freshman wrestling coach, uh, contract for a um, total of nine years experience. So, comments? Back row. Michelle Hayes. Yes. Rex Ryder. Yes. Kelly Trauma. Yes. Jacqueline Nashville. Yes. Jay Fabian. Yes. Otis 5 0. Okay. We have item B on the agenda is a resolution uh, for Diana Grant has been a uh, dedicated employee of Madison Local School District for the past 32 years. And whereas Diana has provided great service to our district and care for our students and facilities through exemplary forms for duties that the Madison Local Board of Education recognized with appreciation for contributions to the community and its young people and wishes Donna well upon her retirement. And that a copy of this resolution be presented to Diana Brand on behalf of the board. Second. Thank you for all your time. 32 years is a long time of service and we appreciate it. Mr. McRell? Rex Ryder? Yes. Kelly Tromba? Yes. Jacqueline Haskell? Yes. Jay Fabian? Yes. Michelle Hayes? Yes. Votes 5 0. And we'd like the board to consider the following resolution that the Madison Local School District opened a new middle school at 609 Old Ridge Road, and that the Madison Local uh, School District ed educates about 723 students and employs approximately 70 staff members at that site that the safety, for the safety of our students and employees is always the most important concern of the Madison Board of Education, that the current speed limit on Middle Ridge Road is 45 miles an hour to ensure the safety of students and staff, and uh, the board is supporting the Lake County engineer to recommend to the Ohio Department of Transportation a traffic study. 
the Board of Education supports the efforts of the Lake County engineer to lower the speed limit uh, on the middle of the bridge road from 45 miles an hour to 35 miles an hour in the best interest of safety of events and students, staff, and community. So moved. Second. <coughs> Comments? Is the traffic study that going to be done this year going to Generally speaking, and I'm going back to my console vice mayor case, a tra traffic study will generate ratings of what the, the danger of intersections and the roadways are. And based on those ratings is whether the state of Ohio uh, or ODOT will warrant speed limit changes, signal changes, or anything. So it's all based on those studies. Andy, when the study is Well, I informally last week, um, the traffic engineer came out and she observed and she's going to come out and do those a few more times. But the actual, this resolution, she's trying to, based on need and necessity, uh, get community support from this board, the township, the village, get letters of support to have it lowered without the full traffic study. The traffic study that she does do, ultimately, once traffic settles in in this new site, will warrant what we're going to be able to have with Dayton and our driveways and, and before we stop if it's a light. How about the library board? Right. That would be another group that she should go to. Agreed. Right. You're absolutely right. Anyone else? Dr. Well? Kelly Tromba? Yes. Jack Nasville? Yes. Jay Baby? Yes. Michelle Hayes? Yes. Rex Ryder? Yes. Vote is 5 0. Thank you. Um, the, in the consent calendar is a Appreciate the board's support of the following contractual commitments. Uh, consultant services have to exceed $30,000 for the Sally Miller to buy a family liaison career, college readiness transition uh, uh, counseling for Michael Parrish. Uh, consulting for $3,000 a month, not to exceed uh, six months. Uh, and to prove a contract between Madison Local School District and Crossroads to provide counseling and prevention services and to approve transportation contract between the Madison Local School District, Elite Fleet Incorporated, or special needs children attending outside of Madison, and the following contract, or it was two more actually, for the tuition between Madison Local School District and Menor Exempted Village District for education of handicapped student. Uh, and finally, to approve particip participation in Jefferson County ESC's Virtual Learning Academy again. Comments? Mr. Decarone? Declan Asbill? Yes. Jay Fabian? Yes. Michelle Hayes? Yes. Rex Ryder? Yes. Kelly Tromba? Yes. Vote is 5 0. Uh, that concludes my recommendations, Mr. President. Thank you, Dr. Gotti. At this time, we'll have public participation. It will be right at the podium. Public participation is only one avenue of communication with Madison schools. The Board of Education recommends contacting the appropriate school official on any matter. You can contact Dr. Gowdy by phone, email, or a personal visit. Finally, in making public comments, please understand that there are privacy considerations in stating names and incidents. Theatrics in the signing comments are prohibited. Please stand at the podium, state your name and address. Each participant will be allowed at the podium one time, no longer than five minutes. Public participation will last up to 30 minutes. So if anyone would like to speak to the board, we have a link up here. Come up and say your name, address, and address the board. Good evening. Um, my name is Mary Ann Guy Froby, um, 18 Boardwood Bennett Road. Um, I believe each of you on the board, as well as Dr. Gabby, received a letter from me. Um, the board members were CC. The letter was actually directed to Dr. Gabby. Um, and I would like to read that for public record, if I may, please. I was discussing the Memorial Day parade with some people, and it brought up an interesting topic, the Madison High School football stadium. What do Memorial Day parade and high school football have in common, you may ask? Dick Hamlin. The current name of the stadium at NHS according to John Dreyas, is Memorial Field. The field at the old Memorial School was Dick Hamlin Memorial Field. I was not alive when Dick Hamlin gave his life for our country. 
I was barely walking when the Vietnam conflict ended. But this is Madison history and should not be tossed aside to be forgotten as so many other things have been. I humbly beseech you to rededicate the field at Madison High School to Dick Hamlin. Continue to honor this Madison graduate and his sacrifice for us and our country. Um, something I noticed this week on, on Facebook, and it was brought up in the agenda tonight, um, you guys are moving the three bells with help. Um, and the thing on, on Facebook is talking about keeping history alive as we move forward. And I would like to ask again, in person here, to rededicate that field to Dick Hamlin, who was a 1966 graduate of Madison High School, and he gave his life for our freedom. So I, please, I, I'm not asking for a big, huge fanfare. Just put his name back on the field. I don't know why it was ever removed in the first place. Well, the field has moved from Memorial to high school. I actually played football with Dick Hamlin here and graduated with him. Um, so I understand the significance of the field being named after him. Um, I don't think the board, we've been so, um, we haven't forgotten it, we just haven't named anything, including our new buildings or whatnot. So I'm sure that is on our agenda down the road, but we really haven't had time to thoroughly investigate. One thing I was just, when I was investigating it, I, I don't know what's got Mr. Fabian or that there are actually five. There are five, correct. Uh, Vietnam veterans that gave their life for their country, and who knows how many people in World War II and all the other conflicts. So we are taking that consideration. It, it was important enough to have named it for him at one time, and I, I know that there were five. I had also did the research. Um, Dink Hamlin needs to know. That was the field at the old high school. I, I realize that, but. I don't understand why his name did not transfer. Well, that was before us, I think. That was in Maybe. 1994, I think. I, 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 I don't know. Right now, the board has been focusing on getting new buildings open, getting school open. It's on the plate. We haven't not, we haven't intentionally not discussed your letter. Oh, no, it's I, just, it's, it will be discussed. We just needed to get some stuff done. It, no, and that is why I needed to come until after the schools or the ribbon cuttings. And then after school had started and got going, I you know I did not come. You know, it took me almost a month to write the letter itself. And I waited. So, you know, I understand that there are things that are more important than naming that, but obviously we have bells being moved. Why not do it at the same time? I was on the board when the, when the field was named memorial, and it was because of all the other people of this visual. And then I also uh, graduated a couple of years after Dick, but I sang at his funeral and talked about a very sad time, very sad for, for all of us. So it's very strong, but each each of these people gave their lives in something more. That's the reason that the, being on the board of Ed, that's, that's the reason we went with that. But again, Dick Hamlin was, that field was still in existence. That's what it was open. Okay. It was in existence, but it was not. It was a side of the It was not. It was not the like, I can tell you, Marianne, we will give it due diligence at the, when we have the exit. We're not just going to do it quickly. Okay. We're going to think through it. And if we, it is all in our minds, we will have that. So when, when should I um, come back and, and look for an answer, Rex? Well, we, we can certainly discuss it at any time in the future board meetings. I, I, I'm not prepared tonight, obviously. But, but I think I, the next work session is in November. So. I, I, I didn't expect the answer tonight. No, 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 I just session. I, I don't want it to just slide to right. the side again. Thank you. That will not happen. Thank you. Anyone else? This is putting a huge crimp on me. I mean, my life is on my there was some talk of the name, please, and address. Or name and address first. Go so off at 794 Ross Road. Uh, there was some talk tonight about the graduation and uh, being uh, 
uh, making sure our students are prepared for success. And I'm saying, uh, well, in what? What are we preparing to succeed in? Their future, the college, careers, right? Or careers. You know, it could be military. Joe, it could be it could be military. It could be technical. We do the practically the way. It could be you know any anything out there that that one of the things that will probably one of the reasons we're not close with these healthcare providers yet is because. I'd like to see us have a partnership where our kids have an opportunity to go out and have jobs afterwards. So we, we want our kids employable. We're not preparing kids simply to college. Well, that's what I'm getting to. Uh, what provisions are being made for uh, those students who are not pursuing a college course besides the Auburn person, which uh, we're busing and I'm ending the middle here? Maybe I don't understand your question, but I'm going to say the same thing I just said. Uh, we have Project Lead the Way. We're, we're looking at adding biomedical training programs. We have all kinds of computer type training that we do with the children. We do a lot of different things to prepare kids, not only to go to a four-year college, but hopefully to a community college or, or go out into a huge workforce. So I, I, I think our staff does a very good job at preparing kids. The unfortunate reality is right now there's probably a lot of not a lot of jobs out there. Well, that's true. There, there, it's coming back to that. I mean, there are, there are, we, uh, what's the, you know, Sustar from EWT? Alliance for Working Together. Alliance for Working Together, we work with them. Those, the, the battle lots, all that are, are, all these things are designed to provide connections for our kids to go into. Matter of fact, let me give you a good one. And, and it's only you to put my five minutes charge. So oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm trying to answer your question. A good Mitch Crotch, I don't know if you know him, Mitch played football here, so he told me the other night at, at the football game, he said, Project Lead the Way prepared him, and this is the case where he went to college, Miami of Ohio, which is a very good school, but it's a technical program that we provide here for our kids. He said it prepared him for his first two years at Miami University, where he said he didn't even have to study, because he had he got he gained that much knowledge from that program. So yeah, we do have we do have other activities. We're not just trying to prepare our kids to go to college. Yeah, we want them to have those skills that they do go there, but we're trying to given the resources, we're not going to provide as much diversity as we can. And on the so, other end of the spectrum, here. Okay. All right, Joe. Very uh, uh, interesting article in Plain Dealer. Somebody's Plain Dealer. And it had to do with manufacturers who today are saying that we are not preparing our our kids for the real world. Too much emphasis is being put on, let's prepare these kids for college. Well, not every kid goes to college. Now, we had a very good vocational uh, uh, set up here in this school, and of course it was disbanded and broken up and gone to the winds. But I, I, I just wanted to know what, what we're doing now to prepare these kids for the real world. We have skills, we have parenting skills, we have basic computer classes, and you know we also have basic financial literacy, which is really important in preparing them for the real world. Part of it is learning how to get up, meet deadlines, come school on time, have a work ethic, those sorts of things, and that's what these prepare kids for the real world. So I, I guess I don't understand what else you would expect your school system to do, other than to try to work in conjunction with families, because the school system can't raise children to have a sense of work, at work ethic, having some internal motivation, and want to embrace lifelong learning, because that's what it takes to be successful in the real world. Well, I think it's putting together to everyone that there's more evidence to put on sports programs and things like that than there is to making sure a guy can walk out of here and get a job. I vehemently disagree. I, I totally, totally, many, totally how disagree with that. How many, uh, 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 People that are going to voice them and say, "Well, gee, what did you do in football? What did you do in basketball?" So those, they're, they're not going to say that. They're going to say, "Do you know how to run a machine? Do you know how to, you know how to, uh, how to?" Uh, That's a freedom of a choice. Whatever. They're allowed to play football if they like. They're okay. also allowed to go to Auburn Career Center if they choose. Auburn okay, you're saying the Auburn Center Career Center is our only avenue of, of education towards the real world. But you said only. That's. That these are all choices that they make. We have a post-secondary program where the kids are able to 
work and go to school and pay for their college credits by doing virtual, so. virtual learning. But manufacturing, you mentioned, manufacturing jobs aren't there. Unfortunately, the economy has stopped all those industrial level jobs. So these kids have to get up to a level where they can compete. Well, according to this article, our schools aren't going enough to help us to get to get the we need. Okay. Uh, uh, that's five minutes, I'm sorry. Well, wait a minute. Well, you no. my five minutes up there. I still want to know yeah. something. Uh, we, have these, we have these uh, students coming from, uh, from, wait, from, I think, from Thompson, right? How much did, did well, the money we get for each student coming from Thompson? $745, yeah. which one? Uh, total. How much are we getting? How much money are we taking from the Thompson people and putting it into our district? I mean, this is, you know, these people are in trouble, and we're going there and robbing them of, of students. Of like I said before, line. Joe, you're out of line. Because you know what? First of all, we didn't go rob anybody. Let me, let me say you straight. We did not rob anybody. They came to us. I'll show you emails from them that are so happy that they are here. We did not solicit. We did not rob anybody. Open enrollment, Joe, being of your political persuasion, that's called school choice. We are competing on all fronts. School choice being one of them. We are competing in virtual learning. We are competing on all levels that we can, as you see from our state report card. School choice is one that our government, your, your elected officials, say school choice is it's a, it's a competitive market out there. You can bring your kids to a Catholic school. You can bring them to Madison. You can bring them to any school. That's called choice, which your party supports. And, and again, we're competing because we're providing a good quality education. They're entitled to come here. They are Madison students. And they're, they're not Madison students. students. We're going to stop this conversation at this point. If you have more comments, come up to the board office or call it back to Gabby. Is there anyone else who would like to do this? What are they doing? Well, that's your opinion, that's why this country is great. Yes, sir, you have to stand and stay for a minute, please. Uh, uh, my name is John Campbell. I reside at 134 Paradise Boulevard. Uh, my family and I here moved here three years ago because of your school system. Uh, we we, uh, we have made an exodus from the Euclid school systems. So nothing more needs to be said about that. Um, I just wanted to thank uh, the young lady, the, the lady that said something about your school, about about the um, big Allen field. Right, yeah, because I'm a member of the National Guard, so I got to kind of watch what I say here, okay? Um, and you were mentioning about getting students ready for the outside world. Um, just an idea. I mean, this is going to the school board. Uh, did you ever think of maybe reaching out to the corporations? So, like, some of them might want to, you know, because they're looking for ASE certified mechanics out there. And it really costs a lot for regular, you know, just regular guys to go there. I mean, they offer these vocational schools after they get out of school, but they have to spend an arm and a leg. And I'm sure a lot of the corporations like to get these kids at, at high schools. And that way, maybe you can get your, some of your programs reinstituted. <laughs> Just, that, just a thought. That, that's one of the things we were talking about with these health care providers, and, and that's an excellent suggestion. We're, we're trying. <laughs> it is. It's a very good suggestion. I, I just, I, and, and again, we're, we're willing to work with any company out there. We have six companies that supported BattleBots that came, brought engineers to work with our kids after school hours, brought our kids to their companies, worked with those kids and then went with them and actually some of these companies paid ten, twelve thousand dollars for the parts for these machines so that they could go to these competitions at Lakeland College. So we, we are doing we're we're trying to do more of that. So if you know of any companies that are interested, let me know. We'll, we'll, we'll no, I don't. I'm just no, no, we'll you guys sure. carry more clout than I do. I'm just a i I'm, I'm I'm a citizen. But also when the time comes for you to rename the field, memorial field, you've got the American Legion and the VFW here. They'll be more than willing to donate to the renaming of your stadium. All that you gotta do is reach out to the commanders of those posts, and I will guarantee you they will have an honor guard there for you and everything you need. They're really good about that. that. That's what's happening with the, the Bell uh, situation, uh, the, with reaching out to all those posts, and I know Post 112 is part of that. 
and they're reaching that out to yeah, all of those agencies to get the proper setup with it. We have a very nice setup already, and this is going to be even nicer. So. Well, like I said, just you know, we've only been here for three years, and yep. it, like I said, that's why we're here because of your schools. So hopefully, you, know, you can reach out to a major auto manufacturer to help you out. Thank you. I must say, all communities have good things. If the reason you moved here, that's fine, but there are some good things about other communities too. Anyone else? Or Not what Madison's about, that's not what this board is about, and it's not going to happen. 
And people can be angry about that, but at the end of the day, it's about the kids who need an education and they're going to get it. And what I don't want the community and the sports to lose sight of is we have 230 kids attending Madison schools from other districts. Only a third of them are from Ledgemont. But we're only talking about Ledgemont because it's our close neighbor and the issues that are going on. We have 230 kids who have decided that they're going to get a better education in the Madison schools than their home school. And I think that speaks volumes to the quality of the education that we have here in Madison. And I think that sums it up. We have a uh, need for executive session. We have a motion for adjournment. Seven. Second. Mr. Vaccarello? Dave Fabian? Yes. Michelle Hayes? Yes. Rex Ryder? Yes. Kelly Tronzo? Yes. Jacqueline Asbro? Yes. Votus 5 0. Thank you everyone. One month we'll be meeting at our Southern Elementary School for regular sports.